I wish I had known about cannabis when my before my boy Buster died. I just it kills me because I, I know I could have got more time with Buster if I had known about this two years earlier because Shorty got lymphoma on March 14th, 2015. The vet told me she had eight weeks to live and uh, I started her on the oil. We did lose Shorty uh, in 2020 to arthritis. We didn't, it wasn't cancer. We don't want to give your dog too much THC to start with. Just know that guys, we need to give your dog mainly CBD when it comes yeah. to lymphoma. CBD is the star of the show when it comes to lymphoma. We need to start with this in the video, by the way. Well, welcome back everyone. Hi everybody. Welcome back to our podcast. It's good to be back. The Healing Project. I'm Jesus Ramirez. And I'm Isabel Ramirez. And today we have a very special guest, <laughs> Tino from Peace Living Pipples, my dog beat cancer, and all sorts of good stuff. Tino, how you doing, brother? Good, guys. How you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. A little tired? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Didn't get much sleep last night. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I'm glad you're here, brother. So we're going to talk a little bit about Shorty, mm -hmm. go over all of the things that you and I experience with dosing and all that good stuff. But before we do, Tell us a little bit about you. you. Uh, Las Vegas native, moved out to LA, moved back to Vegas, uh, and uh, started Peace, Love, and Pitbulls in 2010 because uh, I've had Pitbulls pretty much all my life. Uh, first one I got was a boy named Petey. It's about 18 years old. Actually, it was my brother's dog that my mom got from my brother. And then I ended up, he ended up being my dog. And uh, ever since then, I fell in love with the breed and then had a bunch of pit bulls up until 2004. I got Buster and Shorty like a week away from each other. Shorty came from Nashville. I bought Ban Buster from a, a breeder out here. I know that's a bad word to people in the, uh, in the dog rescue uh, industry, but this is before I knew any better. So I got Buster in california where was that that was such a great story how i found buster i was uh i had lost i've always had dogs so i lost a dog to cancer two of them so i lost frankie which looked was a spinning image double of shorty to lymphoma wow. before shorty so i lost buster to this cancer he had like this something on his heart that kept filling up some kind of tumors. Um, I don't know. Not a hermangiosarcoma. No, it? that was Buster. No, I'm sorry. Muggsy. All right. So I had Muggsy and Frankie um, before Buster and Shorty and Muggsy. He was a big dog. Uh, I lost him. He had some kind of heart thing going on and we put him down for that. And then shortly after that, Frankie got, lymphoma and we did the chemo with her and she just lost weight and just dwindled down to nothing just bones and then she ended up passing in her I guess in my sleep in my house in her in her sleep in my house um that's that was the easiest one because I wasn't there I didn't have to take her to the vet I've been through so many of these but you got to take him to the vet mm -hmm. and you got to put him down I mean that's just that's just the worst experience because I have to call them. I have to make the appointment. I have to take them into the room. And that's just, it's just, that's killer, dude. it's the worst thing ever. And Frankie was the only one that out of all the dogs that I've lost that died at home, I hopefully asleep. Um, and then, so when I lost them, I was looking for more dogs. I got online. I found um, this breeder out in California and I went, I have a good friend who lives in, uh, um, how do you say it? Uh, Kenyatta and uh, La, Kenyatta. La Kenyatta. And I went staying at his house to see another breeder that I had uh, known. And she had already had some of my money as a deposit. I went to her house and she's very popular in the breeding world. And uh, I went to her house and just was not impressed with any of the dogs. And she, I didn't even get my money back. I just left. I was wow. so disillusioned. And then I went to my friend's house and that night I was looking online and I saw this guy, his, he was the only guy that answered his phone. I went over to his house that night and Buster's father came in. For those of you who've been following, go to peacelovingpitbulls.org, 
spell it out and you'll see um, all the pictures of my dogs on there. But Buster, his dad came in and he just so beautiful and Buster. So he had two puppies left. He had the runt, which was a female. And then he had Buster, which was the pick of the litter. And I was like, ah, oh, cause I went to go get a female, but I really was so impressed with her, with his father that I ended up getting Buster. So Buster came along just the best dog ever. He was so amazing. And then a week later, Shorty was born in Nashville, Tennessee. Actually, not Nashville, around Nashville. I got hold of this woman. She shipped Shorty to me from Nashville. What? And uh, I remember going to the airport and picking Shorty up. Oh. She was in this little crate and she had peed in her crate and she was all freaking out and she was so sweet. And uh, so Buster and Shorty came along and I started training them. So I had dogs all my life. I didn't really get into, I didn't really train them. You know, you had misbehaving dogs. And at one point I was just like, all right, enough. I got to train these dogs. And then that's when I started training and with Buster and Shorty and uh, they were so well behaved. Then I got, then they got pregnant on accident. I wasn't a breeder. And then Boo Boo came along and I ended up keeping Boo Boo. And I was so impressed with Buster. I went back to that breeder and I got Rocky who looks nothing like Buster. Um, but just every dog, all of them, Buster, Shorty, Boo Boo, and Rocky were my four that made me, inspired me to start Peace, Love, and Pipples. And they were so well behaved that people were like, hey, train me, train us, train us. Mm -hmm. And at, the, at that time, I was DJing in Vegas and I was just doing Peace, Love, and Pipples and as a side project just to kind of be an advocate for Pitbull and Pitbull Rescue. And people were like, train me, train me, and train me. And then finally, after I decided, well, I'm not going to be a 50-year-old DJ. What am I going to do next? And I was like, I'm not really qualified to do anything. Um, so I started training. And then um, I, I, I had sent so much business to the company that, that uh, trained me that they were always giving me free training equipment just because, thank you, thank you, because of uh, just me with four dogs, four pit bulls walking down the park, all, all off leash, standing next to me. Um, and then uh, that's how Peace, Love, and Pitbull started because of Buster Shorty um, and Boo Boo and Rocky. I started Peace, Love, and Pitbulls in 2010. And then we just, you know, we grew to like 30,000 because of uh, um, a picture of the kissing booth. The so, kissing booth. So I started the Pitbull kissing booth. And then that, this guy from like the East Coast came out to this um, uh, Pitbull Awareness Day in Vegas. And he took a picture of our, kissing booth he posted we jumped to 30,000 followers in that month and then we then I guess it, it was before Facebook got all political and crazy because someone at Facebook was really looking out for us because in the algorithm I guess it was showing peace on pitbulls on the site because we were getting a thousand likes a day wow. for over a year I would just look and there'd be a thousand more likes and there'd be a thousand more likes and then we we jumped from 30,000 to 300 and I think the highest we were was like 335, 335,000 followers. But anyway, because of that huge following, uh, when Buster, I wish I had met you guys in 2012 because I lost Buster in 2012 to hermangiosarcoma. And um, then there was a woman out here that connected me to you guys because Shorty got lymphoma. And Shorty, again, like I said, looked exactly like Frankie. Frankie was a blonde. It was her, it was her double. Um, and then uh, Shorty, ah, they were just such great dogs. Shorty got lymphoma March 14th, 2015. Mm -hmm. Her lymph nodes were huge. People with lymphoma, you guys know what I'm talking about with the dogs. He, I didn't even know there were lymph nodes where they were, yeah. where she was swollen. She was here, then they were here, and her uh, groin area. It felt like there were like two like, like hockey pucks in, in her groin area. They were just so huge. And then behind the back of her legs. Mm -hmm. So now I, you know, I know whenever I meet dogs, I'm just always feeling their lymph yeah. nodes. How are your, how is I your like dog's that. lymph nodes? And um, we got her. Oh, and then I met someone out, someone I knew from the training world said, Oh, contact these guys about cannabis oil. And I just, it kills me because I, I know I could have got more time with Buster if I had known about this two years earlier, because uh, it was 2012. Oh no, that was three years earlier that Shorty got lymphoma. The vet told me she had eight weeks to live. 
and uh, I started her on the oil and um, we did the prednisone like we had for a little bit and it seemed like that helped the lymph nodes but then I mean it got bad like her her head like sunk in you know when they lose that muscle mm -hmm. in their head when they're like starting to go was she eating um yeah I I guess but God, it, that was that was uh 2000 dude i didn't realize that you had so many dogs that had cancer before shorty well i mean look at what's happening on online with their, our group i mean people are just this week i there was like at least five six people all lymphoma right. just today yeah. there was three yeah. or four I, that's the majority of what we talked to i would say one or top one and two is lymphoma yeah two of my dogs look exactly the same both got lymphoma and I, I didn't spend all the money. Like I hear people are spa saying on radiation. I was starting, they were, do they do chemo through a pill form? I guess from what I remember. Yeah. yeah. That's an option. Cause that's what they were giving her. And she just dwindled to nothing. She got, got down to skin and bones. It was terrible. Um, and I'm so glad I didn't, Shorty didn't have to go through that. So how was, how old was Shorty when, when she got diagnosed? Uh, so March 14th, 2015, she was 11, I guess, because, uh, oh, wait a minute, she was born in 2004. So yeah, she was 11, mm -hmm. right? And what was she officially diagnosed with? What did they diagnose her with? Uh, I don't remember what kind of lymphoma it was, but it was- Did they stage her? Did they but, give you a stage? Well, yeah, they said eight weeks to live. So wow. whatever stage, they, when they mm -hmm. give you eight weeks to live. Wow. He was, uh, he was not very- um, his bedside manner was not good. And I get it. Doctors, they got to kind of get numb. They get numb to that because they can't get emotionally involved. But he was like, oh, yeah, this will take her. I, can, I remember him saying that this will take her in about eight weeks. And um, what they give you as like treatment options besides the prednisone and the chemo, was there other? Did they go over nutrition with you? Did they? No, no. As a matter of fact, I just, well, because I just dealt with that, you know, well, not just no, 11 years like earlier. That, yeah with my other dog. And I remember thinking, I'm not going to do what I did with Frankie with Shorty. Um, and I had heard about it. I'd heard stories from um, Chong, Tommy Chong. God, years earlier, I should have put that together of when he had mm -hmm. prostate cancer yep. and Chom Tommy Chong still alive. So yeah. if you guys are paying attention. He's still alive. He got uh, prostate cancer and you didn't do chemo right no That's, you didn't do no, chemo did a no. little bit of prednisone we did prednisone and i remember even after getting off of it kind of giving her some more because of her lymph nodes because i noticed yeah. and i wasn't i didn't know i don't know what it was was it the was it the prednisone or was it the cannabis that was making the lymph nodes sleep hey uh, let me shrink. let me talk about something yeah. real quick before i forget mm -hmm. okay. so a lot of people when we talk to them for the first time their dog's lymph nodes are swollen right because that's kind of what ends up happening, the lymphoma is triggering that lymphatic system to deal with all that, those lymphocytes, right? Mm -hmm. And so it causes a, a cloggage, a blockage in the lymphatic system, and they swell up, but they're processing all that lymphatic fluid. So most people, when we talk to them, they automatically assume that the lymph nodes dictate how the dog's doing. So if the lymph uh, nodes are super huge, yeah, my dog is like super done, right? Yeah. Like my dog's going to pass away tomorrow. Yeah. That's not the case. Right. So guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is we don't believe that way about the lymph nodes. We mm -hmm. actually believe that it's appetite that mm -hmm. tells us how the dog is well, doing. The lymph nodes are our filtering system. Yeah. So it's going to filter out all that junk and it's going to make it worse. They're working over time. I mean, it's just kind of how it rolls that way. Yeah. But so, appetite is, is the big one. Yeah. You know, water too, intake. So seeing those lymph nodes go up and down in size throughout the day, that's right. going to happen. Mm -hmm. and, and just know... Uh, guys, when we're talking about the lymphatic system, that's the job of the lymphatic system to to Please, deal with that so lymphatic true. fluid. So right. if the lymph nodes are swollen, it's not a that's telltale a that your dog's about to pass away. It just tells yeah. us that your dog's dealing with it. It's it good. Does, it's actually yeah, a good yeah. thing. Now, if your dog hasn't eaten in a while, there are remedies for that. That's mm -hmm. why we were talking about the prednisone, because at first the inflammation was causing so much um blockage in the body, the lymphoma, that without the lymph, uh, prednisone to clear up some of that uh, inflammation, the dog feels really yucky. Gotcha. And they don't have any appetite, yeah. especially once you start, the prednisone does enhance 
appetite and thirst. Mm. So it's a good thing to give it to the dog to reduce inflammation, mm -hmm. increase appetite. So what I'm saying with that is in the beginning, if your dog's not eating, there's a, a very quick remedy that we can give your dog is a little bit of prednisone. And I wouldn't typically recommend mm -hmm. what the vet recommends. I, I go by either right. half of that. So if your dog weighs like 40 pounds, we would want to give like half of that, which is 20 milligrams broken up into two doses morning and evening, mm -hmm. 10 and 10, something like that, just to help with appetite and mm -hmm. inflammation. Sorry, I did want to say that. Doesn't though. the, uh, well, the cannabis helps with that appetite. Yeah, too, but right? meanwhile, let's say they haven't gotten the medicine, the cannabis oils yet, mm -hmm. but, and they're trying to figure out stuff. A temporary solution is prednisone. Mm -hmm. And we can get on that pretty quick with the vet's, you know, recommendation. Yeah. In a small amount. So during the time when we first met, you and I, I remember the lymph nodes were swollen and, and Shorty was really thin from the scalp, you know, area yeah. up here. Was she eating at the time? Do you remember? I, uh, we started her on the, um, the dog cancer survival guide by Damien Dressler. And so you did switch over the diet to, Oh that. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, before so she, she got cancer. Yeah, she had been, but she had been a kibble dog her whole life until 2012. When I started, cause I started bandit, I got bandit in 2012. No, no, 2013. Um, so on 2013, I put everybody on raw. Um, and up until that point, I had never had a dog live past 10 years old. Muggsy was, I think nine. And Frankie was probably around nine. I lost those dogs to cancer and I've had dogs all my life and never have I had a dog make it past 10. And for me, I'm convinced on it's, kibble. it's that shitty food. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the kibble. Thing. And I tell everybody, look, I mean, anything that's on the shelf has preservatives. Yep. Mm -hmm. And if it lasts longer than a week, it's got preservatives. So I don't care if you're spending a hundred dollars for a 40 pound bag of the best kibble there is. I, I'm, 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 <laughs> you're not going to get a, a, a door endorsement for kibble from me. Uh, after I started feeding raw, I've never had a dog live past 10 in the all last three dogs that I've lost to arthritis, by the way, we did lose shorty, uh, in 2020 to arthritis. We didn't, it wasn't cancer. We, I did a blood test just so that I could shut people up if they ever, Oh, well, how does she die? I did a blood test the day we put her down and all her levels were like they were when we did the blood test before. So the lymphocytes, the red, the blood cells, all that were, I remember the vet saying her, um, I think it was her red blood cells looked like a dog that doesn't have cancer wow. and the lymphocytes. I wish I had the numbers. I, I don't have them, but everything didn't look like a doctor that a dog that has cancer. So I, I 100%. I mean, then you get into the pesticides, you take your dogs yeah, yeah. to the park and they're licking their paws. So one habit I've got into is if I take my dogs to the park, as soon as I get home, I wash off their paws. I, I, I especially ban it because he likes to roll around in the grass. I wash all that stuff off of them. I mean, cause there's, you know, and now my dogs are all on, on water. That's not from the tap. I go to those like sparklets guys, where you yeah, go filter. So i just fill, yeah the filter so i fill up these big old bottles and i give them that water i'm not fucking around anymore um when it comes to my dogs i mean they're getting raw they're not getting kibble they're um i'm washing down <laughs> washing off their paws as they go to the park and they're not drinking tap water well it's important let's let's reiterate that it's important for people to understand that the amount of diligence and and attention to detail that you pay to the not only the diet but eventually we're going to get into the dosing part of it mm -hmm. with the medicine, but all of it has a big deal. You know, the prescription part, some people, because of their opinion of, of prescriptions would prefer to give those over something natural oh, or yeah. a supplement or something like that. Yeah. So just remember uh, that there's side effects to everything. Even natural supplements can yeah. have side effects, yeah. but if we limit some of these prescriptions that we're giving our dog while we're trying to help them out <laughs> bro you go, said a mouthful yeah go a little more natural Look right what's like, happening right now in our country without saying the word yeah or nowhere has any of the experts talked about exercise and diet no eat junk food and get this medicine that we're we want to disseminate across the whole country no one has mentioned exercise and, and what well, you're let's talk about that, because look, when you got, found out that Shorty had cancer, 
you started you you started talking more about the energy that you were infusing with Shorty, the way that you played with her, oh, her yeah. exercise, yeah, the food, yeah. how you yeah. tailored it, and then obviously the dosing with the medicine, the cannabis yeah. oils. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Yeah. When so when she was diagnosed, I was devastated. She was only like I said, eleven, and I remember. And when I when I, when you interact with people on Facebook in the group, I always say be positive because they I mean they're picking up on your energy. These dogs are little antennas for, you know what what we're putting out there, and it's so it's easier said than done. But uh, like if you're gonna watch TV, just watch anything that makes you laugh. I just say watch comedies, keep yourself, keep your spirits up. I remember laying there on the couch with Shorty. And it was the summer and she was laying on me and we were just, you know, moping, feeling sorry for ourselves. And then I was like, and I remember just going, nope, we're not going to do this. Okay. We're going to get up. And we went outside and we went and she went swimming. Cool. So she went from daddy sad, I'm sad to, oh, we're swimming. Um, and I don't know how long we had been on the cannabis oil at that point, but it, I, I, I wish I would have documented this better because it was, you know, it was my second time, but my first time dealing with, with, I mean, working with cannabis oil because the way her head shrunk and I've seen people talk about it on the group. Oh, it's so terrible looking oh, yeah. mm -hmm. the way their heads yeah. shrink in like yeah, this. And it looks like a little concave yeah. kind of a muscle cone. wasting. And it's the, so terrible. And yeah. she did that. And then I remember it was so sad. So she used to love to chew on these little Nyla bones. And ever since she got sick, she stopped chewing on them because one time we were upstairs at my house and she chewed and then she yelped. I, she was in pain or from the cancer. And then that was the last time I ever saw her chew on, wow. a, on a, one of them Nyla bones. So we got her off the kibble <clears throat> when Bandit was born and then everybody went to raw. And then once she got cancer i switched her to that can dog cancer survival guide i don't know how i found that book and then that was where we cooked uh like chicken liver and uh um some kind of vegetable there was three different vegetables or four that he recommended um and then um kind of little natural supplements that you put in there and uh so she was eating pretty well with that she loved it at first and then which i hear on the message board a lot my dog's not eating. So I'm like, okay, it's okay if they go a day, maybe two without eating. Mm -hmm. But then I remember I would, I mean, we're talking about cooked food and then, but it had all kinds of, it had like apple cider vinegar in it, it had all kinds of stuff that could throw a dog off. But then there was like the anchovies and like the fish omega three element of, of the diet. And then I would just, at some point, a couple of times, I remember just getting little handfuls of it and just force feeding her and just putting it in her mouth, closing it. Little Pete, little. Was this while she was on the cannabis oil? Yes. How yes. long before you got to see a change, like from that, her being like that to like, wow. Well, that's this what I'm like saying is like, I remember us moping around and then just getting up and going swimming. So it had to be after we were on the cannabis because she did not feel well. I mean, before I moved out to LA, uh, we came out here and we were at a park and I was doing a demonstration for the training. And if I have a video, I have a picture of this, of I'm working with her and you could see how swollen, and this is before, cause we came to LA and then that next week I was like laying in bed and she would lay next to the bed and I was petting her and I just felt her huge yeah. lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. So we were in LA, we came back, I went to the vet, got diagnosed. And then I, when I look back, you could see in that picture how, that you could see hit the swollen lymph nodes. And then she wasn't herself. She was like, you know, her eyes were like this. And so from there, that was uh, 2015, March. So I don't know when we started seeing the difference. I wish I had kept better notes, but did she, was she on a schedule? Did you put on her like cannabis schedule where you gave her at a certain Once time? Once we started dosing. Yeah, did you so have... we did, yeah, right. I guess we did the tinctures uh, like three times a day is what I remember. And then I don't know if we started the FECO that's at the beginning. I don't remember. No, um, we, we started the tinctures, all of them in a way where we started CBD first, mm -hmm. eventually introduced the THC, but then we went back and started the FECO okay. CBD. 
-hmm. So a lot of people, uh, when it comes to lymphoma, want to get their dog on RSO oil, which implies that it's mainly THC. There mm -hmm. could be RSO oils that are CBD uh, dominant, but mm -hmm. typically they're THC. So if you get an RSO, guys, understand this, and, and this is very important. The detoxification process that happens when you give a dog THC, it happens very quickly, and that could cause a reaction called Herxheimer's. And that can potentially make your dog sicker mm -hmm. from the deluge of all the yeah. lymphocytes going back into the bloodstream and mm -hmm. your dog just feels yucky. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to do that with THC. That's why when people say, I have RSO and I want to give it to my dog because it's the yeah. strongest, it's yeah. the best, and it's the whatever they think it is, right? I, I disagree and I discourage them from that mm -hmm. because it's too strong. Too much, too strong. It's strong. weird. It's it's too much. It's too strong. But yeah. that's the truth. If we go too quickly, that we get that reaction. Not only will your dog become gun shy of taking the medicine again, we mm. could actually cause a reaction where we might not be able to come back from mm. where your dog's vomiting, having diarrhea, mm -hmm. no appetite. And now, yeah. even if we stop the medicine, that might still continue because of the lymphoma. So we don't want to give your dog too much THC to start with. Mm. If you're going to start on any type of thicker medicines or oils make sure it's cbd mm -hmm. dominant mm -hmm. then we can probably give a little bit of that yeah because cbd just decompresses inflammation. inflammation and so now we're we're helping that lymphatic fluid leave the body with cbd but thc will kill cancer which actually causes more lymphocytes yeah. to go back yeah. in so just know that guys we need to give your dog mainly cbd when it comes yeah. to lymphoma CBD is the star of the show when it comes to lymphoma. We need to start with this in the video, by the way, because I see a lot of um, people posting on My Dog Beat Cancer and uh, other pages about RSO, RSO. And I'm like, you guys, first of all, read the read the rules. Read why we don't recommend RSO. I mean, it's just, and it's got down to the alcohol and the mm -hmm. um, and coconut oil kind yeah. of way they do it. And and then Rick Simpson like doesn't recommend, like he hit by himself, got RSO, if you didn't know, Rick Simpson, he made it for him and his friends and he had, he did not have dogs in mind. No. And not that you can't treat them, but exactly what you just said. It's like, I see people constantly, oh, I got RSO, I can get RSO. And I'm like, okay, that's great. But why don't you just do what we've laid out yeah. <laughs> the blue and that's the thing it's they want to do and i get it they want to do something sooner than later so they're yeah. able to buy something at yeah. a dispensary by their house or wherever mm -hmm. or a friend makes it and gives it to them but at some point we have to be smart about it because if we start doing things just because we feel that it's important to start and yeah. we're rushing things we're going to make mistakes. Well, what you just said before this is what you want to, you don't want to give too much too soon. You got to start with CBD. You got to get the inflammation down. Then you just bring in the THC. Yeah. And start. that's why we do it that way because we've, it's taken us years to yeah. figure out how to make it all work. Yeah. And this is really the best way to do that's it. That's my point. Yeah, and yeah. that's what I'm trying to convey <laughs> on Facebook. It's like, look, you guys, are gambling with your dog's lives. Well, when how you're... strict did you follow the protocol? Because a lot of people want to take it into their own hands. They just think like, <sighs> I get to a certain point and then 15 drops, 10 drops. And that's the big whatever. problem right now and is that people- It doesn't work that way for don't... them because people don't want to follow yeah. it specifically. Well, you know what? I am the king of not reading directions okay. and not doing and learning shit the hard way. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like that with this. When you guys gave me those tinctures, I followed it to a T. I was doing it three. I remember three times a day I was doing those tinctures. Yeah. Yeah. And then when we, in, when we included the THC, that was at night. And that was mm -hmm. the protocol I did for a long time. Mm -hmm. And people watching this on My Dog Be Cancer and Healing and the other groups, don't experiment. I mean, you've gone this far. You've figured out, I wish I had known about cannabis when my, before my boy Buster died, because I know I would have got, we had people with hermangiosarcoma in the group that have gone years with after after the i mean hermangia so sarcoma is i mean we he was diagnosed in a month he was gone mm -hmm. and when i when i talk to these people it's like you know what you just said it's like oh we got no you don't got it yeah. these people have put a lot of time into this just like you said we've it's trial and error there's it's still a schedule one drug according to big brother um and, and it's, it's helped endless amounts of people Tommy Chong is still around. I mean, we know that this stuff works. So why wouldn't you go with someone who's been through 
um, hundreds of dogs, right? Mm -hmm. If not thousands, thousands of hundreds of dogs, thousands of dogs, and you've got it down. And then now that we've got the hempium, which is even stronger CBD. I mean, again, you're just what you said. You people, I'm a hard head. Not with this it was my girl. I want eight weeks. They gave her, I mean, listen to the people who have put in the time and, and done it. You know? Yeah. And that's our biggest, like, we scratch our heads about it all the time. Like, why do you change something when it's been working? And a lot of times, and believe it or not, it's because the vets, the vets tell the, the, our clients That's something, toxic. right? Mm -hmm. Hey, you know what? We shouldn't be giving the dog this much. Why don't you dial it back? And they do it be kind of behind my back secretly, not telling me. And then later the dog starts having issues. And when I ask them what's going on, how much are you giving? And I know there's times where they kind of tell me, Oh, well, I had to change it because my vet and I'm thinking, vet. why, why yeah. did you change yeah. it? There's yeah. the, at some point when we get to the proper dosage, just know the way that we dose with the cannabis oils, it's a titration schedule that increases gradually over time. By doing this, it allows whoever's taking the medicine, a dog, cat, person, whoever, mm -hmm. to become tolerant or build up a tolerance. That mm -hmm. tolerance is needed. Because the little old lady who's taking it and the little tiny cat who's taking it, their tolerance to the medicine is different. Mm -hmm. And at some point, if we don't do it correctly by building tolerance up in the body, that person, cat, dog, whoever will actually have a negative reaction, which mm -hmm. anybody would have it. That's yeah. the thing that people have to understand. It's not something that just happens to dogs, just happens. Vets will tell you, hey, it's not safe to give a dog or a cat CBD or THC products. It is very safe. I the, can't believe the, the, the thing that they have to, I guess, also say is it's not safe to give in large dosages. That's right, right. really the big one. It, it, and even then, it's not that it's not safe. It's just uncomfortable. Yeah, it's we don't want to take something, yeah, it's not make your dog, your dog. Unco uncomfortable. It's not fun. That's not the goal. Yeah. The goal is let's get your cat, dog, yeah. or your, your loved one feeling better. Yeah. If we did it correctly with lymphoma, in the beginning, just CBD first week. Yeah, That's yeah, it. Yeah. Now we have a new product with the hemptium CBD that you've been using as well, right? Yeah. The, the powder, the nano powder, that powder has allowed us to increase the amount of CBD that we give a person, a cat or a dog uh, exponentially and dynamically without increasing the THC. The, the new hemptium mm -hmm. has zero THC, but it works Mm -hmm. way better than our cannabis oils because of its bioavailability. Mm -hmm. So now what we're doing is supercharging the amount of CBD in the very mm -hmm. beginning that's decompressing all of that inflammation, right, right. allowing the lymphocytes to leave the body. And now the dog cat person feels better with just CBD in the first week. So the, the, um, the CBD allows more absorption, right? The hemp. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, that's what I meant. So as be as before like what how much what was the body absorbing before oh, good question With the, the science right? is kind of still out on on the numbers but what i've heard the consensus is anything hemp derived that's oil suspended so a, a little oil bottle of oil tincture bottle is probably anywhere between zero to eight percent bioavailable which means that some companies because of their either extraction process or their integrity, there's just no CBD in the product. So there's actually no CBD in some hemp derived products. Now, even if it does have CBD because of how it's extracted and it's in oil, the body can only absorb it at almost 8% max. Wow. That's it. So if you take in 10 milligrams, you're getting oh, less man. than one into the bloodstream. And That's the goal is to get it into your bloodstream to have it do something. Get as so much as you yeah, can, right? So cannabis oils are a little bit better because they have THC. Typically, they do better at extracting them because the material is so much more expensive. And now you have a product that can be twenty to forty percent bioavailable. Wow! But that's it. That's it. I've heard that the only thing higher than that is smoking it. And there's numbers out there that people are going to debate whether it's fifty percent bioavailable or less. I don't know. But the, the, that's it. There's nothing any more unless you do some type of intravenous, which there's nothing really like that. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that anyway. Uh, so the powder that we have with hemptium now, because of how it's so small, the particulate, the body absorbs it so much better that 
it actually gets into your bloodstream at 96%. So the goal is to get it into your bloodstream. We're doing that now with the hempium, but because cannabis derived CBD is so synergistic to get can, uh, cancer to go away through the process of apoptosis, which is, you know, cancer death and cell death and all that it's needed. We need to have some amount of THC. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. the THC is needed in order to kill the cancer. And therefore in most cases, we still need cannabis derived products mm-hmm. like THC and CBD mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. some amount of THC in there. Right. Whenever we talk about the next format, this is where we're talking about FECO. It's basically a different extraction process that allows the medicine to be stronger. That's it. FECO and tincture is the exact same thing. You can make a strain of tincture Mm -hmm. and a strain of FECO out of the exact same medicine. So you can have a uh, platinum derived tincture, which is indica dominant and a platinum derived FECO. And it's the exact same thing. The big difference is tincture is maybe in the neighborhood of one milligram per drop whereas the FECO could be anywhere between 10 to 30 milligrams, depending on the size of the drop with the stronger stuff. So when we're giving your your dog or the cat or the the vertebrae, the person, the medicine, we want to be able to give that in a very calculated way. So like we were talking about before, you had probably a schedule that we gave you. You followed that with amount of drops that we told you to give. And those drops represent an amount of medicine that we're trying to get into the bloodstream. So at some point, the amount needs to equal what we come up with as a formula or as a basis to get people to that proper dosage. It's based off of weight. Mm -hmm. And so if we have a dog that weighs X amount, we're trying to reach that target amount based on the weight. Now there's more variables involved if the person or dog or cat has a different type of cancer, then there's different medicines maybe required in higher dosages versus one or the other, like CBD would be higher for lymphoma, mm-hmm. whereas osteosarcomas, because of how they're so aggressive, we might want to give a little more THC mm-hmm. than with lymphoma, but those are the things that we help you out with. Yeah, right? That's why We're- I tell people online when they're, I got the CBD, I got the oil, how much should I give? And I'm like, look, first of all, where are you getting the oil? What kind is it? Mm-hmm. And, and basically what you're just saying, and let me, correct me if I'm wrong, is before when I was giving Shorty, how many drops in the morning, how many drops in the middle, how, and how many drops at, the, at night? So I was giving her all this CBD oil. so she could absorb this much. Right. And now we're giving her this much CBD to absorb this much. Almost. So- yeah. When I see these people on, I mean, I mean, I get it, you know, money's tight. I mean, but it's like, get the hemp, get the night. Do you want more in in, uh, absorption or do you want less? So basically what I'm, what I'm getting from you is the more absorption of CBD I can get, the quicker I can get to THC. And that's why we tell people in the very beginning, the way we get your dog up to that proper dosage is really dependent on the amount of CBD we can get into the bloodstream. Right. Because of the two reasons, the first one is to build up that tolerance Mm -hmm. to the THC, Mm -hmm. but the other one is, is to balance out the body. Whenever we're talking about inflammation or lymphoma, it's all inflammation based. So that inflammation needs to go away before Mm. your dog feels better. Exactly. As soon as we do that, right. Your dog feels amazing. You'll see your dog going from lifeless, limp, Mm -hmm. not eating, Mm -hmm. skinny, wasting away, no energy to a dog that starts gaining weight, digestive system works better, no vomiting, no diarrhea, energy, gaining weight. And eventually the supplements or the prescriptions that we started giving like prednisone and any other gabapentin, tramadol, those are the Western Mm -hmm. medicines that they would recommend for a dog that has lymphoma. Those prescriptions, eventually we reduce them over a period of time. Once we start the THC Mm -hmm. to allow the dog to transition from those prescriptions over to the more holistic natural remedies like the cannabis oils right, right. in a titration schedule where we reduce back as we give more with the cannabis oil. So it's like throttling on a gas pedal, right? We're going to give more gas when we need more cannabis oil and give a little bit of break when we're done with the medicines. Right, right. And so at some point, we're just driving on cannabis oil. Mm-hmm. Usually when it comes to lymphoma, we don't recommend chemo or prednisone because mm-hmm. They do right. have a limited point of returns mm. in the fact that as we get going with chemo after about two to three months and, and 
I'm just saying this because it's what I've seen with other clients. It tends to not work as well. Mm. And so those dogs that are doing well in the beginning, first month or two, in the second, third, and even further on down the line, the prescriptions won't work. The chemos will stop working. And now they're switching over to other chemos mm-hmm. yeah. to see if those work. And now it's kind of like playing whack-a-mole, right? We're mm-hmm. just trying to yeah. figure out where it's going to come from next. And, and what do we do now? The, the thing about chemo, it's not sustainable. And the vets will tell you this. The thing about cannabis oil is that it is. Yeah. And the chemo makes the dog feel like shit. Yeah. And we've been able to do that. And, you know, yeah. cost-wise, as far as, as far as that, because that's the big thing right now. Yeah. People are struggling because of how the economy is due to the way that the world is and all that. And I'm not going to get into it, but there's, there's people that are struggling and just know guys, the cost is super wow. different. Wow. Chemo can be anywhere. I've heard from five to 15,000. Yeah. I, the, the number that just popped up to my head was I saw someone post about 10 grand and yeah. I'm like, yeah, cannabis way low way cheaper and your dog's not going to feel like crap i mean (sighs) yeah normally cannabis therapies and it depends because you're going to need to find some oil probably close to where you Mm -hmm. live at some point and and get that and we don't know what that is right but typically to start with it could be anywhere between 500 to a thousand bucks to get medicines that you need to get started right away and those medicines can potentially get your dog into remission that's the thing people always want to ask us is it going to work for my dog? It's like, well, it's never not worked. It's just, we need amount, a certain amount of time. The sooner you get on it, the better. Yeah, I mean, to my get dog this had to eight work. weeks to live. And, you know, we got five more years. Wow, with her. man. Five and a half, no? Yeah, she yeah, she was uh, about two weeks shy of her 17th birthday when uh, we lost her. Did she have a problem taking the medicine at any time? No. After she got into like we did hold that thought. I wanted to before we go on to the next. I wanted to reiterate what we were just saying was, people on the page with the RSO, the way that uh, you got you're you're going to step two before you do step one. Right, right. right. You yeah. got to get the dog's inflammation down, and the best way to do that is CBD. So when you're going right to the Perfect. RSO. You're just like you said, it could, it could be, it could make it definitely make it her feel make worse, it worse and yeah. make it worse. We got to get that inflammation down. So you want to get CBD that, that absorb the most the body can absorb hemp, PM, hemp, what he's got, um, get that dog on the CBD. Then you start adding the THC. I, I know you guys are in a hurry to get your dogs well, but this you, we've got well, some people here that have been through it hundreds of times believe them trust them i'm telling you my dog made it five more years because of this protocol Well, i think what i'm going to just throw out there real quick if people are in a hurry to get their dog on some amount of cbd the hempium powder you can buy it yourself and you can have it shipped to you mm-hmm. right away before you even talk to me mm-hmm. get that stuff get it and then when we talk i can give you instructions on how to start that cbd mm-hmm. get the cbd started and then we could talk more about getting you some more medicines but mm-hmm. That CBD, what we'll do is we'll put a link up on uh, the podcast, probably at the end that has the promo code. It's Healing Project OC. It's actually through Hemptium. That's uh, hemp, T-I-U-M, hemptium.com. And what they provide is a 2000 milligram advanced spectrum CBD powder. That's what we're recommending for everybody. And you can buy that on their website and have it shipped directly to your house for free with a discount. So for those of you, I'm saying this because some people are that we've talked to are saying, I can't even afford any medicine. Well, mm-hmm. if you can't afford really any, med- at least get this. Yeah. And now you could start with something and then that'll buy you time and we can always talk and then try and figure something out mm-hmm. at that point. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I cut you out. Bro. Sure. <laughs> so yeah, Isabel was talking about, did you notice when there was a decline with Shorty at any point? Did you ever notice a decline with appetite or Going backwards, like say midway through a uh, year two or something like that. Oh, wait, what was the question you asked me? That was different. I just wanted to know how you administered the oils. To oh, her. oh. Does she have an issue with because most dogs they get to a certain point they don't want it no more. Well, that's the thing, and this comes <laughs> down to training, guys. <laughs> I put this on the video. Like my dog will let me grab his face like that. I can't do that. Like for me, when I when we first started, put it in some food. I was like, no, you know, like when you put it under your tongue, you said, it's yeah. like, no, I want it in their system as quickly as. And then if they throw up their food, 
You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Or if they don't, or if I don't, if, if I miss, that's happened before you give them food and then they go throw it up and then the other dog eats their throw up and you're not paying attention. For me, I go directly into their mouth. I've always gone directly into their mouth. Mm-hmm. There's videos that I posted on the page that you could see. I'll post it again. I would, at the beginning, I would, so with the tinctures, I just drop them in the mouth mm-hmm. and they were good. Oh, so back to training, get your dog used to you touching. And this is what I say for people when they want to cut their dog's nails. You grab your dog's feet, they flip out because they don't want you touching it. Some dogs don't like it. So you got to make that part of your daily schedule of sitting, hanging with your dog, show affection by touching their snout, mm-hmm. by rubbing their feet. This is for cutting nails. But for the mouth thing, I just got it just got to the point where the training, because all my dogs are super well behaved, they trust me completely. I can grab their mouth. I can put stuff in their throat and they're fine with it. If you don't have a dog that lets you do that, you got to practice. You got to have, you got to touch them. You got to touch them. For me, I'm not messing around with food. I'm putting it directly in their mouth. So now when I do the powder, you guys give me those little mixing containers. I I got a ton of those that I don't even use for anything. I, I take the powder. I turn my dog on their side. I pull up their lip and I pour it in and then I give them a treat. Um, and with the FECO, I would just put it right on my finger. I remember, I remember near the end, Shorty was her, her <laughs> she was a super stoner. She was, uh, she was taking gobs of <laughs> FECO at the end and just fine. I remember the first time I gave her too much FECO and she was like, <laughs> she was like a little paranoid. You could see like, cause like you would move and she would do that. And this is when she was sick. And, um, yeah, so get, train your dog, get them used to you touching them. Helps Touch. big time yeah. when it comes time yeah. to giving yeah. them the giving medicine. Yeah, and then the same thing with yeah. force feeding. Like you know, I'm just, I, like I said, you can go a day or two without if they're not feeling well. I get it, but if you're doing the dog cancer survival guide and you're making that little mush, I was getting little handfuls of it. I would open her mouth. She'd let me. I put it in and I close her mouth. She would have to swallow it. Um, and then we had a couple of rough patches like that where we had to feed her. And that's what I tell people sometimes. Hey. Whatever it takes, if your dog stops eating, because like you said, a day is cool, two days maybe, third day, we got to get your dog to eat and some water, right? If it hasn't drank any water. But at that point, I tell people, hey, if you got to go buy a darn cheeseburger and give your dog something at that point, then it's it's really up to you, obviously. But Mm -hmm. the point is, the the big picture is getting your dog to eat, to have some sustenance. Yeah. The oil will do the rest. And, And at some point too, the people that are worried about, well, am I giving a little too much, a little uh, too little of the cannabis oils and all that? Just know it's not a perfect science, right. people. The way that we give the medicine, it's based off of calculations that we do that are very, very roundabout because there is no real science on this. So the way that we approach it is in the most calculated way, but we can't take it too serious either and think, well, I gave my dog 10 drops versus 11. Mm-hmm. My dog's going to, you know, have some weird reaction. It's not that, mm-hmm. you know, we can have some freedoms to be a little more loose, but you obviously want to follow some type of schedule. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Tino, just real quick, brother, it, I wanted to kind of uh, ask you one more question. So when, when we started talking initially, and then we got to the point five, six years later, and, and then Shorty passed, unfortunately, we know now it wasn't because of the cancer, but during that whole time, you experienced a lot of stuff. What was the takeaway for you? What did you feel like? What, how can you, what would you tell people if they were in your shoes? Right. Cause that's, what's really this whole podcast. About. Well, I would actually, I wanted to go back to what we were talking about with the vets is like, look, your vets aren't allowed to talk about this. They're, they're, they're given stuff they're giving first of all like i was i wanted to say this before it's still a schedule one drug if you don't know what that means the the government big brother is telling you that it has no medicinal value that it's not going to help you meanwhile we've got literal heroin on a schedule well actually that is a schedule one drug as as well but we've they've, they've they've labeled this plant a schedule one drug that is has no medicinal values. And we know now that that is 100% bullshit. I mean, there's, there's the the Charlotte Figgy story where they made Charlotte's web after this little girl had so bad seizures, 300 seizures a week. And they put her on the CBD, I think it was the cannabis with cannabis in it. And one down to one seizure a week. 
So your vet is going to tell you st stuff. <sighs> I argue with vets about raw diet. I mean, they, they don't, it's like big brother has this thing to not get you to eat well, healthy that, and to exercise. And they tell you, Oh, I mean, I've literally had an argument about, Oh, you, that's the worst thing you could, this, this vet told me that's the worst thing you could feed your dog raw. Oh, really? So what are we, are we giving Purina ch uh, kibble to the dogs in the wild? I mean, is, mm -hmm. is where are yeah. they getting their kibble? Because yeah. this doesn't make any sense. Uh, vet, by the way, every dog that I fed raw has lasted past 10 years old. It's How opinion. do you explain that? Exactly. And then the other thing is, is I would, you're asking me, what would I tell people don't listen to your vet about about diet don't listen to your vet about cannabis oil because they know nothing about it there's very few out there i would recommend dr karen becker i don't even know if she rec uh, recommends um cannabis oil but she's a she's a vet that's talking about diet 100 percent uh, what you should be feeding your dog and and it's all raw and it's all natural and i, I don't know where she stands on the cannabis oil, but find a vet who is not so close minded because the guy that told me that my dog had eight weeks to live actually called me two, three years later and said, I'm a believer because I would always send him stuff, little updates. Hey, it's year two, it's year three, it's year four. Remember you told me she'd be dead in eight weeks. He called me and said, I'm a believer now. I got to tell you, man, I'm a believer. And I tell people about it. They're not allowed to, they're not supposed well, to. Well, that's the reason, you know, a lot of the the vets that we've talked to, believe it or not, we get calls on a regular basis from vets wow. all over the United wow. States, all over. That's great. Uh, we, they don't say their names sometimes. But th we can't talk about Good. Good it in, in the public's eye because yeah. they could get in trouble. Yeah. But we do. We, we have lots of vets who call us asking us for advice, or they ask us if there's somebody locally to their state that can help them the way mm -hmm. that we're able to help mm -hmm. dogs here in California. Mm -hmm. uh, we tell them the same thing that we tell everybody. Look, we would love for all of us to be on this together, right? The yeah. medical side and yeah. the holistic side to try and get the goal done, right? which yeah. is get your dogs better. We don't need to fight about it. The problem is they, they are not allowed and they don't have the education. Right. So they're going to either not say anything about it or they could potentially be negative about it. Yeah. it at that point, you understand the person that's asking the vet about these therapies that they normally don't recommend or deal with they're not going to recommend them so just know that people they're gonna they're gonna tell you some negative stuff so and it's not the vet's fault i mean like people have relationships with their friends the vets are just unaware right. because you if, if something's a schedule one drug which that means there's no funding that means there's no research right. so they're not going to waste their time trying to i mean some vets will go above and beyond and do their own research and i've, I've talked to a few but big pharma is not your friend I mean, the whole fool me once, fool me twice. I mean, y'all are working on fool me 80 times. How many times are you going to be lied to by big pharma? They are not interested in curing you. They're not interested in helping you. They're interested in keeping you uh, the, the piggy bank. Keep coming in and giving us money so we can give you, forget exercise, forget diet. No, just take this pill. Big pharma is not your friend. Go to your vet to get a leg fixed, to get an operation, but most of them are full of shit, and, 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 they're, and they're telling people that, that THC is, is uh, toxic. toxic to dogs. No, I have endless videos of me giving my dog THC for my finger. It's not toxic. The old, this is a Joe Rogan joke. The only way someone's going to die from marijuana, and that includes your dog, if there's a shipment of a two-ton shipment of weed that falls on your head, that falls out of an airplane, <laughs> your dog's not going to die. Your dog's going to get the munchies, and it's going to freak out. And I always recommend putting on Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon to calm everybody down. But stop listening to these guys. And, and you know, I'm not trying to shit on – I'm not a, I'm not a veterinarian. Oh, are you a vet? No, I'm not a veterinarian. But I know that they don't – spend any time because it's still a schedule one drug and all they're doing that not them but the big pharma get them to buy pills get mm -hmm. them to spend money on this little thing that's just going to kind of uh you know get them by they're they're not interested in you getting well they're interested in selling their product stop falling for it well to kind of just reiterate all that and to kind of uh, close it up just know everybody that if you're doing your own research, that's really the best way to go about it. Do your own research on not only whatever your dog's being, uh, been diagnosed with, maybe get second opinions, maybe find out if there's something holistic that could be done about these yeah. autoimmune disorders, including the cancer. And at some point, if you guys need more help, 
feel free to get a hold of us. Uh, we're going to leave our website at the uh, the link at the end of the, the podcast. It's healing-project.info. Mm -hmm. You guys can follow us on Facebook. Tino has a group. Uh, Peace, Love, and Pitbulls. My yeah. Dog Be Cancer. Yeah, uh, all on Facebook. And, and so, sorry to interrupt. This is important. I mean, look, I'm abrasive. I got a shitty mouth. But just go look at my work. Go to peaceloveandpitbulls.org and look what I've been doing with these dogs. Um, th this that I stake my name. And, oh, you asked me, what would I recommend? I would recommend that you stop experimenting on your dog and, and stop trying to save a buck and talk to the people who have figured this out. We, he's got thousands of dogs that he's helped under his belt. They've got thousands of dogs that they've helped my dog included. Um, don't start, stop skipping a and going to Z do everything you need to do. Follow the protocol. I had a dog that was given eight weeks to live. She made it to five years. That's all I need to hear. When I, when I get into, our, got into an argument with one of my vets in Vegas, she was like, she was started in about the CBD and I just went, Shh, just like Austin Powers. I was like, <laughs> I was like, and I said this, I said, please, and I, I apologize. I go, you don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I go, how many years have you dealt with cannabis oil and dogs? Zero years, zeros. I have a dog, the dog I was talking about, five years that we've been giving her cannabis oil. And, and I, I just basically shut her down. I go, you don't know what you're talking about. So let's just stop, okay? Because I've put way more time into this. It's like, I've been doing jujitsu for many years. And it's you meet, a, you meet a meathead who's a 250 pounds and I'm a buck 80. And he's like, oh, you could never do that to me. And I'm like, have you ever trained wrestling or any kind of jujitsu? No, I will definitely put you to sleep. They, people just don't know. Like if yeah. you practice something, if this is if this is something that you do every day and then you come up and you tell me, oh, that's not going to work. I'm like, you've put no time into this. You don't you, you have no idea what you're talking about. And it's the same thing I get. And I get so frustrated with people who's all my vet said it was toxic. And vet, I'm like, look, don't believe me. Go to my pe uh, people. Go to my peace, love and pit bulls page. That's me. That's my I stake, my reputation, my 501c3. That is me. Trust these guys. They know what they're talking about. The, you 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 don't have time to waste, and, and the the sad thing is, is because Big Brother has enabled this label this a scheduled drunk drug. There's no research on it, so you're just taking our word for it. Well, the reason we've built this group, My Dog Beat Cancer, up to over ten thousand followers is because of my work I've done with pit bulls, and people trust me. And you can go see all the work I've done. I'm not a snake oil salesman. They're not a snake oil salesman. We are here to help, and cannabis oil works. Period. Yeah, at the very least, if your dog doesn't make it, it's going to be, their dog's going to be comfortable. It's going to sleep. It's going to eat. And you don't want your dog suffering on their last days. You know, at the very least, they're going to be comfortable. So, Tina, when you were posting videos of Shorty, did you expect to get the response that you did from, from all that? Um, yeah, that's why I started that whole separate page. So, like at the time, 335,000 followers on Facebook. 22,000 on Instagram, I think another 20 on YouTube. Um, I started talking about it. And then that was it just that's all I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Uh, and, and then I was like, Okay, no, peace, love and pit bulls is for advocacy for training for cute pit bull videos. So I was like, Okay, I'm not going to bog down this page with all this. I know people that don't they don't care mm -hmm. <laughs> my dog's not sick your dog's sick i'm not i'm not here for that right. so i started the my dog beat cancer page and i'm so glad i did because like we've reached over ten thousand people and so and then also peace love and pitbulls is kind of like my hey if you want to know who i am go look at this work i've been doing for since 2010 is when i started peace love and pitbulls and trademarked the name and everything but uh, yeah, I knew I because we had a huge following. I was yeah. like, people are going to want to know about this. And then I started posting the videos and people are, are asking, what, what are you doing? How are you doing this? How, what, what are you doing? Go talk to Jesse. Go talk to Jesse. And then started a separate page. And uh, yeah, the, the, it's just that that phrase, pay it forward. I just I wish someone had told me. I mean, because it was around and I lost Buster to her manager. He was only eight years old. And uh, he changed my life forever. I mean, I put his paw print on my forearm. That's Buster's paw print. Um, 
he was such a special dog and I only got eight years with him. And I knew that I was reaching a lot of people and I knew I had to share this and I had to tell people because your vet's not going to tell you. <laughs> hey, so looking back at, you know, everything that you did, would you have done something, anything different? Yeah, I would have started sooner on my first dog. Yeah. That's, uh, that's probably what everybody's biggest thing is. I wish I would have started sooner. I get that a lot on Facebook. I wish I'd known about this. I wish I'd known about this. Yeah. And by the way, people too. I mean, I've already mentioned Tommy Chong. My mom had lupus. She didn't tell the doctor that she has, that she, that she didn't tell the doctor that she was doing cannabis. So I go, mama, why don't you just tell her? Oh, I don't want, my mom's so quiet. And so I'm, I, I wish I was more like my mom. My mom is so <laughs> quiet <clears throat> and, and reserved. And she still hasn't told her. I think she's like, I'm going to tell her. I told her and, to tell him. Yeah. And so the, the doctor's like, I guess we misdiagnosed you. And I'm like, mom, yeah. tell him. Tell she him. told me, she goes, I didn't want to make him feel bad. <laughs> so I, she just agreed. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. So they, the lupus is in remission. Yeah. Is that how it she works? She is not in, yeah. in any she type of lupus anymore. anymore. She's in remission. Yeah. So people, I mean, seriously, that was with all of our medicines too. Look, look into it. It's, it's no joke. At what point when you were doing Shorty's medicine, did you realize, like, realize it was working for her? Well, uh, that's like we were saying before is like, we were doing the prednisone and the cannabis oil. And I noticed these lymph nodes went down first. Uh, these took a while. The ones in her groin took a while. They all kind of went down and the ones in the back of her legs those were the ones that took forever. Did they ever like fluctuate, like get bigger and smaller during the protocols? They were, I don't know if they could have gotten bigger. I mean, they were, they stayed big. They and were, then they weak. just shrunk from, they that. were ridiculous. Oh. I don't remember. Remember? Yeah. I mean, they were huge. Um, and then the ones in the back of the legs took the longest and I'm, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, <laughs> it was a miracle. It was, it worked. So tell me, uh, why did you start Peace Loving Pitbulls? I know we talked about it again, and but why did you start Peace Loving Pitbulls? Was that for you well, personally, okay, so or was it always it had, to spread the word? Yeah, I'd always had. Well, it's funny because I make the joke that the 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 one silver lining, the positive thing about this whole shutdown and uh, and COVID, is uh, Pitbulls finally got the spotlight taken off of them. I mean, there's this been this smear campaign against pit bulls since the 90s. Crazy. I mean, before that, it was Rottweilers. Before that, it was Doberman. Before that, it was German Shepherds. I mean, they're always the media is the enemy of the people. If you don't know that, everything they tell you is propaganda, is bullshit. And before any of this, I'm not going to get into that. I saw this with pit bulls. I've had pit bulls. I mean, we're talking about dogs. We're talking about dogs and they, they signal out this one dog. Again, like I said, this has been done to different dogs throughout history. Guess who the first one was? Uh, bullhounds, bull, bull, um, bloodhounds. They were the vicious ones. There's a great, wow. there's a great article in like the, the New York times from like when it first started, like the early 1900s or whatever it was that was describing this vicious dog, blah, 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 blah. It was bloodhounds. And it was also sled dogs in uh in alaska because they would use them for sleds and then during the off season when it wasn't snowing they just let them roam around and they were killing because they're a pack of dogs so my point is is i started peace on pitbulls because i have these amazing dogs that were i was a kid when i got my first one and i'm like why are you guys demonizing these dogs oh because if it bleeds it leads they want now it's clicks now it's they want exposure they they're just trying to sell 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 consume 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 what's the next thing we can we can blame what if what's the next thing we can demonize so i started peace of pitbulls because like me and millions of other people knew this is unfair this is not cool what you're doing to this dog you're trying to get rid of a whole breed of dog because i mean and there's people out there their their goal is to get i mean just obliviate the obliviate Every, is that the word uh, uh, is 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 get rid of this whole dog right. so i started peace on pitbulls perfect name peace love and pitbulls and then we had a kissing booth with five pitbulls and i was like yeah no i'm here to show you what most people know when they meet these dogs i mean if you're watching the news i mean you're just getting nothing but death and fear and mm -hmm. And just negativity. Yeah. And, and it, why, why would they talk about the millions of other dogs 
millions of pit bulls that are in homes and happy families, the Michael Vick story with those dogs. Those are dogs that the experts, again, with the experts saying, oh, these dogs can't be rehabilitated, uh, kill them. PETA is the devil. If you didn't know that, PETA is the devil. These experts, oh, they have to be killed. Um, they're the worst dogs ever. They've never... And then meanwhile, 50 of them went to best friends in Utah and five of them became therapy dogs and all of them were rehomed except for one because it was court ordered that it couldn't. They're not trying to help you. They're trying to keep you consuming. Do not believe the hype. Anyway, that's why I started Peace Love and Pibbles. <laughs> nice. Okay. Hey, so originally, initially, we used to talk about in the videos, get the cannabis oil from can or the CBD oil from cannabis, not from hemp. Yeah. Now we talk about differences in hemp between cannabis. So now you've been using a CBD powder from hemp mm -hmm. and a CBD tincture from cannabis. cannabis. Mm -hmm. What have you noticed is the difference? Is it working better, the CBD from hemp versus well, the other one? Currently, none of my dogs have cancer, thank God. Um, but one of them is uh, my, old, my oldest buddy. He's probably about 14 or 15. And he's got the bad arthritis that all three of my last dogs died from. He's, and pretty much all dogs typically get arthritis as they get older. He's so, got the same thing, yeah. his, his, his uh, limited gait. And I'll tell you what, if you're dealing with arthritis, first of all, get on this hemp. And if you can swim them, I have a pool. I'm lucky enough to have a pool. I swim him every day from 10 to 15 minutes. And he has, he's doing great. I mean, he's nice. still got a really slow, small gait. But compared to my last three, he's, uh, he's, he's, lasting a little bit longer because we're we're swimming him but anyway we noticed that when we started when we put him on the hemp he um he was moving better at the park we we definitely noticed a difference in his gait um and then i have a little one named mickey if you go to peaceloveandpitbulls.org you'll see all my dogs mickey's a little like chihuahua mix he was having seizures weird kind of seizures where he was kind of wobbling and then he couldn't he was like picking up his legs. It was a weird seizure. I, I, uh, the way he was doing his seizures were happening. And then we got him on the, the, uh, hemp, 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 <laughs> CBD. Sorry. I didn't get any sleep last night. And, um, <laughs> uh, we noticed the seizures fewer and fewer. Um, if, yeah, it's, it's really sad to see a dog when they have seizures like that. So, with the CBD, I'm seeing great results, especially with Mickey with, with no more every once in a while, I'll see a, um, a seizure and then buddy's doing really good with the, awesome. with the, uh, so the powder, typically we recommend it now for just anything, arthritis, mm -hmm. digestive issues, mm -hmm. coat issues, mm -hmm. mood issues, even if there's seizure disorders, lupus, MS, these other autoimmune disorders that aren't cancer, but, you know, can cause yeah. problems with inflammation. The autoimmune The stuff, CBD right? yeah. from hempium is just off the chain. Mm -hmm. Amazing. That's the one that's really doing the big thing. Obviously, if we have the cancer, then we include some of the cannabis oils in the protocol, but mm -hmm. the CBD from hempium is just off the, off the hook. Definitely. Well, Tina, I know you're a huge advocate for all of this because you've seen it all work and you've been there, done that, but Aside from this, well, thank you, by the way, because yep, the shit you. that you do is like insane. You've reached you a ton so of much. people and because of you and the things that you're willing to talk well, we've about. We've reached a ton of people. Yep. I know, but just the way that you go out there and just not give a shit and say, you know, what needs to be heard is, is pretty amazing for people to like, not to have their ears like this, you know, yeah, that yeah. you just say it and then you get it out there and people are receptive to it. So thank yeah, you. I've always been a loud mouth. But because of that, like, I know you do comedy, right? Can yeah, you tell me a little sometimes. bit about that? <laughs> <laughs> tell us about your stand-up you comedy. You did a show last night, but that you do that as well. Yeah. Besides the dog training and all that. Yeah, I've been doing it for about seven years. I moved to LA um, specifically for that. But uh, I was really lucky because I got to, to move to LA with my dogs mm. to be a head trainer for a group out here in LA to train dogs. So I was doing training dogs in, in the day and then doing the comedy at night at the comedy store. It was amazing until this whole shutdown. And, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I've always, I was a musician for, for many years and I incorporate the, the guitar in the comedy and I've always, I've always been an artist of some sort and I've got to, I've got to have an artistic outlet. Um, and that's what kind of keeps me sane. And the comedy is, uh, um, my 
latest because I was a graffiti artist for many years. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> no. I was a Were you a break artist. dancer too? Yeah, that's where it started. Oh, look so, at you. So early, so when it first came out in the 80s, me and my brother caught the the breaking bug and we were breaking in cardboard boxes and <laughs> cool. Do we have to have a battle with dances and, and stuff? Know. Yeah. And then I, I was always me and my brother, my brother's a really good artist. It's too bad. He didn't follow that up, but uh, I have a great painting. He did of, of, of Buster and um, Shorty. Where is that Buster painting? So tell us peace, love and pit bulls, uh -huh. dog training. training. You do that as well. Yeah. So if you're in Vegas, you want training, I can help you. Actually, we do. I do some online stuff, too, if we can. But most of it's got to be hands on. How do they get a hold of it? Um, you can go to peaceloveandpitbulls.org. Spell it out. Peaceloveandpitbulls.org. That'll take you to our Facebook page. Instagram, too. Uh, YouTube, if you want some. I got some videos up there that show a little bit of training. But um, it's always better to do one on one and with people. That's the one thing that you, you've really got to you can do most stuff with Zoom and over podcasts and videos, but you got to really get with a trainer if you're going to train. And then what we were saying earlier about administering the, the meds. I mean, your dog has to trust you. A lot of that is just trust issues. Like, can you pick up your dog and cradle them on their back without them freaking out? Mm -hmm. um, that's that's part of it. They, they trust you. I mean, Bandit still has a problem with that. Um, <laughs> I don't do it as much because he's 80 pounds, mm -hmm. 75 pounds. But when you can take a dog and you can hold them backwards and then like lean them backwards and then they're just looking wow. and they're just looking at the ground. Mickey's the the best. I put, I put Mickey in my lap like this and then he just lays back and then I'll just put it. I'll go like this. I'll extend my hands and I'll put him out and he'll just stay there the whole time until I lay him flat on his back. So the more you touch your dog, the more you train them, get training, get training. You'll be it'll be easier to administer the meds. Very cool. Do you know when a lot of people try to uh, begin looking at cannabis or they're afraid and they have a lot of reservations? Mm. Did you in the beginning? No, because at that point I was already a stoner. I didn't uh, <laughs> I didn't start smoking till late. Uh, and I the reason I started smoking weed was because of jujitsu, because all the greats are high. Right. And it's same with basketball players. Why don't they drug test in the NBA? Because they're all high. Um, so I wasn't worried about cannabis. I learned late in life at the age of 40, how amazing cannabis is. I was competing in jujitsu and I was like, I was high. I was falling asleep in the stands before my match. The anxiety goes away. So it was great. I like took first in no, in, in gi, in, uh, gi, and then second in no gi, uh, when I smoked weed, that was actually my last competition and I did it high, but no, no reservations whatsoever. When I, when I, no fears, no, no, no because I back. know how amazing it was. Absolutely. And, and, and again, why were we so afraid of weed? Why was my mom I'm glad you brought this up? My mom, the only reason she decided to do this is because she saw that it worked on shorty. Mm -hmm. My mom is one of those old school devil's lettuce. And, and, and who do we have to thank for this? The state. Big Brother. Big Brother put this in 1935 with William Randolph Hearst that weed would make minorities, blacks and Mexicans, rape and pillage. That was what they were talking about. It's right behind you. Look at that. They were deemed. Yeah. Yeah. The devil's levis. That don't Big Brother has never been on your side. They've never been on your side. Don't get me started about anarchism <laughs> and libertar libertarianism. Smaller government, stay out of our lives. That's all I'm saying. So, no, I was not afraid because weed is the devil's lettuce in a good way. So what it's, would you say to those people who do have reservations? There's a lot of scared them. Because Tons they, of them. They're scared. Well, this is like I have a good friend. Especially a, if they have like a reaction and they see something and they're like. Oh, when I was in high school, I smoked some and I. They had a bad trip, and because of that, I'll never give it, it to my dog. Like dog. You, you had a bad trip on, on no, smoking? that's what people, people tell me. Said we get this all the time. I took a gummy, I did this, yeah, or I even smoked oh, one okay, puff. Okay, okay. Really well, if you're going to ingest it, you have to understand that it's a whole different process. Smoking. It goes through your liver, it does this thing called 11 hydroxy metabolite. Look at you. That, well, that's just because Rogan has said it a million nice. times. Uh, 11 hydroxy metabolite. So yeah, it's a way. It, there's a great audio recording of these this cop. So they stole some oh, yeah, weed, yeah, I guess. I you guys hear that? Dying. And they they cook some brownies, and he's like, uh, "We're dying or we're dead." We're dead. I mean, yeah. yeah. So here's the thing: if you're gonna ingest it, you got to be careful about yeah, that. Yeah. Because it like smoke it first, and if you're gonna do any kind of edible, do the little I think ten, maybe even cut. Well, that that's in half. why we. 
harp on this so much with the dosing. Yeah. You need to follow our instructions. When you start veering off yeah. and do your own thing, yeah. and then the dog has a reaction, yeah. then you look at me yeah. like, hey, what do I do now? It's like, well, I don't even know what you did. Right. What did right. you change? Yeah, your dog's not going to die. But, excuse me, it might freak out. And, you and it's like, out. that's why you don't want to skip step one. Right, right. You're if The people that are constantly harping about the RSO, if you're doing RSO, you're skipping step one. And by the way, if you're on My Dog Beat Cancer, read rule number six. Everyone's supposed to read the rules and watch the video before you join. Rule number six explains exactly why we don't recommend RSO right. because of the way it's made. And even our Rick Simpson himself doesn't recommend it the way that we're doing it. So read number six on My Dog Beat Cancer and uh, don't be afraid. And my friend, Sam Tripoli, amazing com comedian, he, uh, he's like, well, actually, many people have said this. You know, you can lead a horse to water. You can't make him drink. If you're if you're trying to show someone the answers who's not ready mm -hmm. to receive the answers, you're just wasting your time. And and I we've I think we've all learned that from this group. It's like I'm not I'm not when I talk about this, I don't go get on this immediately. I go, hey, this is what happened with me. Mm -hmm. My dog was given eight weeks to live. She made it five years. I just kind of plant the seeds. And if if they harvest, they do. If they don't, people aren't ready. And sometimes you got to lose a dog yeah. before you figure yeah. out, I got to do something. And that's why we post a lot of the testimonials from a lot of the clients that we've helped in the past with hermangiosarcomas, lymphoma, yeah. brain cancers, osteos, meningiomas, all sorts of transitional cell mass cell tumors. We've helped all types of cancers. That's why we put them up there because the first question we usually get asked is, have you ever helped a dog with this type of cancer? Yeah. We have, we've helped all types of cancer. So yeah. the question is not so much, have we helped that type of cancer that your dog has and has it worked? It's let's get started so we can help your dog yeah. and get that process already going because that's what really takes the longest is yeah. we got to build up tolerance and we got to build up dosage and that amount of time that it takes, we could be wasting time if we're just started. waiting to get a diagnosis, waiting to hear back from the vet. Right now, wait times could be two, three, four weeks. And so, started. yeah, we just, at some point, if you start, there's no harm in starting. The problem that we could run into down the road is if your dog doesn't have cancer, you're going to have to decide whether or not you want to keep going uh -huh. because it will benefit your dog yeah. regardless, yeah. but your dog doesn't have cancer. So it's really up to you. Yeah. But in big, in the big picture, you want to get your dog on some type of cannabis oil yeah. protocol to prolong your dog's life. Yeah, I get people asking just for, uh, you know, wellness and stuff. Like just that. like, yeah, just maybe, yeah, definitely. Yeah, just we can get, and that's the CBD from Hamptium. That get on the CBD ideal. just for yeah. like to get ahead of anything because you know, I, I heard a, it's, it's it's a terrible joke it comes from the medical community. It's like the good news is you don't have heart disease. The bad news is you have cancer because if you live long enough, one of those things is mm -hmm. going to go and that's in humans. Um, and the same thing with dogs. I mean, is, is it cancer? Is it going to be um, arthritis? I mean, we don't get these dogs long enough. You know, I only got head buster for eight. I had shorty for 17. She's the oldest dog I ever had. Why not do everything you can to pro Absolutely. prolong that life? I mean, that unconditional love they give is just that's why they're man's best friend. And also, I wanted to say Parvo. I have a client that I was training for dog training. She had a dog. This was years ago. And she like this was ago. this is way before I met you. This was so she had a dog. I have a video and I think I posted it on I'll post it again. Yeah, offense. yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're video. talking about cannabis, but then at the end of the video, we were talking about Parvo and how the vet said just it, we can put her down here or you can take her home and make her comfortable. It was a puppy. Cause I, it's usually when they get it and this is, she's a hippie. I, I don't know. I even know how she gave it to her. So this is before the tinctures, the hemp DM before any of that, she gave her dog cannabis. That dog is still alive. Parvo. It does that. CBD Parvo will put kills Parvo into her quickly. Mission. Yeah. Big yeah. Time. So if you're, I mean, call Jesse, call, call these guys. It, it, we, at the very least, again, they'll be comfortable. They'll be right. eating. They'll be sleeping at the very least. But I mean, I'm shorty. I'm I'm living proof. Five years, five years. Very cool, man. Five years. And with that, we want to thank so everybody much, really for tuning it. in mm -hmm. and being part of our show, the Healing Project podcast. Thank you, Tino, for showing up on our show. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Thank Thanks, you. brother. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.